Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. Tonight, we bring you Season 2, Chapter 6, The Warning. Let's meet our vampires. Good evening, my name is Whitney Moore, and tonight I will be playing Therese Vorman. Hi there, I'm Luis Carrazzo, and I am playing Nines Rodriguez. B. Dave Walters playing Baron Victor Temple, and this is going to be fun. <laughs> As you've noticed, we're doing something a little different this evening. We promised you a meeting of LA's barons, and that's exactly what we're bringing you. Our regular cast of vampires and a special guest, Ash Minnick, will be joining us at dramatically appropriate moments. Before we open the scene with the Barons, let's recap last week with a rat's eye view from Ramona's sketchbook. What happens when a vampire story becomes a ghost story? Things go from bad to worse. Remember the spooks haunting our posh princess Nellie? Turns out they stole her little sister. So it was time to take them on. Our vamps asked Eva for help. See, Fred, they can learn. And she did them a solid. Annabelle's cool red jacket, bam, ghost proof. Oh, and Jasper gets his very own shiny magic doodad to protect him from the pesky poltergeists. I swear, if those two get any cuter, I'm gonna barf. Nellie did the spider climb thing, skitter skitter right up to the roof to scout the way ahead. How does she do that and still look so good? Ghosts can't do shit by themselves, so these phantoms possess the bodies of some nearby park rangers. When the boss spook attacked, Jasper was right there. He was ready. He put the moves on it and shut it right down. No wonder the Camarilla wants to make him the new sheriff, right? Caught between Jasper and Annabelle, the phantom brought the house down, literally. Roof, walls, floors, the works, everybody out, ollie ollie oxen free. Annabelle kind of took the long way down. Busted herself up pretty good, but she saved lives too. Go, baby B. Our team did the thing. Stopped the ghost, rescued the sister, got away clean. But what was it all about? What did the spooks want? Will they be back? Just before the walls came down, though, Victor got a look at something super interesting. A grave. Dom, I need you to check that out tonight, okay? Don't get caught. Thank you, Megan Jessup, for the beautiful art in our recap. Ghosts, previously. Maybe they've been put to rest. Perhaps not. But from the specters, we now turn our attention back to the undead business of Los Angeles and we invite you to join us as we tell a vampire story. Quite an assembly we have here. Baron Rodriguez, Baron Vorman, Baron Abrams, Baron Temple. Nines, 
It's good to see you. Hmm. How is everything on the downtown end? You know, it's the same. Just the way I like it. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Glad you could all make it. It's been a while. Hmm. Abrams, I trust things in Hollywood proper are going well on the business end? As always, full of tourists, full of blood, full of money. What more could a kindred want? It's true. And Santa Monica. It's booming. That's what I hear. Mm. I hear you sold off half the boardwalk in Venice to the, one of those tweet tweet companies. Mmm. You know, they infuse a lot of money right into our economy. And you know what more money means? Those desperate tech bros. You know, they taste so good. Mm. Everyone that wants to be a startup billionaire have the next app. It's quite a desperation in their blood. That stuff's dangerous. Yeah, desperation can make anyone do some regrettable things. You don't say. It's true. And and also, thank you for setting this up in Culver City. I, I don't get down here too often. This seems, uh, it's nice. It's, uh, it's quaint. It's uh, neutral, I guess. Low key. Yeah, hmm. Let's talk about... Regrets. Hmm. Regrets. Victor, I'm very eager in hearing your plan as the new announced prince. Oh, here we go. Well, you know, it's I'm not prince. I've simply declared a praxis. I mean, my thought was if Vannevar can go around throwing his weight around and saying that he's the one that runs everything, well, so can I. And if we can distract them, if we can delay them, if we can buy us more time to do something, fantastic. That's your intention with this, Ed? To buy us more time? Yeah, absolutely. How do you suppose exactly that that's going to work? You think Vannevar is quaking in his Elysium. Oh my goodness, there's a there's a challenger for the Praxis. What must I do? No, I, I don't think that at all. But what I, did you think? If we can use their litigious bullshit against them, why not? That's what I was thinking, why not? You know, I, I, I don't think it's going to work, but hey, imagine, what if it did work? And then we keep the Camarilla out of Los Angeles for another hundred years. Now, Victor, you do realize that declaring yourself as a possible prince means that you have sworn dedication to the Camarilla. No, that's not, I mean, that's not what it means, but again, they're treating us all like we're Camarilla. Didn't, didn't he send Chaz around <laughs> to talk to you, to talk to you and get us to bow down and kiss the ring? That's exactly what it means. Claiming Praxis is a Camarilla privilege. Anarchs, the unbound, don't claim Praxis. It'd be like me claiming to be, I don't know, a citizen of what? Iceland. <laughs> well, but Iceland's not invading. The point is, I can't actually be the president of Iceland or whatever they have there if I'm not an Icelander. It doesn't work that way. You've basically said, I quit the movement and join the Ivory Tower. I mean, of course I didn't do that. I mean, they're all stuck up and wanting to go back to sending things on parchment with wax seals. No, I don't want that. Think I, they're gonna allow you a take back? A do-over, a mulligan? I don't need them to. Again, we're just, I'm stalling. I'm trying to get Vannevar to the table. I wanna talk to him. I Maybe I can reach him. And what are you gonna do if that happens? What's the plan? That's what we're here to talk about. What is the plan? Now, Victor, you wouldn't be planning to double-cross us, would you, after our wonderful meeting? Oh, this ought to be good. Unless, maybe, you're planning on working from the inside. Perhaps I have soft-sold this in our previous discussions, and this is my first time making your acquaintance, but big fan. I've heard ridiculous stories that I, after this, I need to... You are kind of a legend. Did you hear me? <laughs> Love it. Yeah. In fact, Stick I, to the point, please. I have a friend of mine I need you to meet, actually, but... Here's what I believe. The humans know. The second inquisition is happening now. There's hunters in Los Angeles now, and we all need to unite against that. 
they're not going to distinguish that you're a Toreador and I'm a Ventru and you're a Bruja. So wait, we're gonna kill that one, but not that one. They're gonna see us all like monsters. Malkavian. Malkavian. Actually. Sorry, Malkavian. But Don't you're know so, how you're you so forgot that. Beautiful. One. That's what it's. I'm used to this being mm. Toreador. Nelly said she took out the last of the hunters that were chasing your tail, the ones who were working with Blaine. So. We've eradicated three, but when in our history has there been three? Three that went missing. Do you think anyone that's running this thing is gonna be like, oh, the three we sent to investigate Los Angeles never returned, so it must be nothing there. That's what I want. So if we have to find a way to not kill each other in the streets with the Camarilla, we can go to war with them in 2023 when the Inquisition is behind us. That's we, my thought. You should be one to talk about killing people in the streets, mm. inciting public violence. Oh, as a new baron. I'd say this is pretty irresponsible. So let me get this straight. You're worried about the Inquisition finding us. So your plan to hide from them is to live stream yourself where they can see you? Brilliant. Yeah. What have I done on, on one of my streams that violated the masquerade? Have you guys even seen my streams? Do you have phones? <laughs> uh, I have assistance. Right. I, I haven't done anything that would risk the masquerade. Except show yourself. Right. There's no picture of me anywhere. If I wanted to hide trembling in a basement, I would join the ivory tower. Where it is, we're supposed to be free. Hmm. Well, I can't say I disagree. You don't? I can't. It's true what Victor says about us being on the edge of war. Yeah. Violence has already happened and we need to move quickly, whether that's violence or not. You see, I have the wherewithal to meet with my fellow barons before throwing Molotov cocktails at cops. Not saying that's what happened, but. Uh, so this griff, this whole grove thing, uh, first of all, you're welcome. He sent the sheriff out to kidnap Kindred and violate the, the masquerade by risking mortal lives and we stop that. So what were we supposed to do? I think it's very easy for you guys to hear third, fourth hand what happened. What would you have done? If the sheriff rolled into downtown, brought a carload full of hitters with him and walked up and told you what you were going to do, what would hmm. you have done, Rodriguez? I don't know, but the sheriff wouldn't dare to do that in my territory. That's why it didn't happen downtown. Mm. I suggest keeping your coterie on a tighter leash, Victor. There are many things. Unfortunately, reckless may be one of them sometimes, but Jasper did what he had to do. I support him in this and I defend him in this. He murdered the Camerlish sheriff. And became the new sheriff. And you what of that? You don't think that was an overreaction? Uh, again, we don't recognize their authority. I don't give a shit who their sheriff was. Some random guy came in pushing us around and threatening people around us and threatening my coterie, and so yeah. So you cut his head off in a parking garage with mortals not 100 yards away. For the record, I tried to talk to him. He wouldn't listen. <laughs> well, now we'll never know, will we? I think you guys are overreacting to this. I think it is just as much or more Vannevar's oh, problem. You'll know if I overreact, Victor. You'll be the first to know if I overreact. I recognize I'm new here. What do you all recommend? Well, you've been the first to directly have a confrontation with the Camarilla. I suggest you let us know your coterie and where they stand, for example, Jasper has been appointed sheriff. Now, I understand that you don't acknowledge their authority, but that's not gonna cut it. So this Jasper, can we trust him? Is I mean, he working with us? To the extent in which can any of us be trusted for anything, <laughs> uh, fair. I believe Jasper will not overtly do anything to harm us. I think Vannevar made a very savvy tactical decision in naming him sheriff to set him against his coterie and to set him against us. Well, how's his willpower? <laughs> what if they offer something 
absolutely irrefusible. Not everyone can be bought, Therese. Can you? Oh, I don't think that's true. Agreed. What is it about him that makes you think that he can't be bought? I think Jasper values knowledge. And I think the knowledge that he seeks, they don't possess. I can't speak for him. I don't know what it's like inside of his head. And quite frankly, it can be a bit of a maze in there. But what I know of him in the time I've known him, that's my sense of him. Will he say yes or no? What do we want him to say? Those are two different things. We need to know where his loyalty is and the question of what we might require of him or ask of him, that's a different one. If we want him to say yes and go in deep, would he do it? I think I could convince him. Do you think he understands what it means? Honestly, probably not. And what of your position? Let's follow this line of logic, shall we? You declare praxis. There is a meeting or a confrontation. How do you plan to move ahead with the Camarilla? Well, it, hypothetically, hypothetically, we're, we're just putting ideas on the table right now. Terrible idea, but okay. Again, my goal of this meeting with you all is for us to leave on the same page. And I understand you all have had a vested interest in Los Angeles for a very long time. So I'm not going to do anything overtly that the three of you asked me not to do. If that's the praxis, whatever, I'm here for us to be a united front. But theoretically, praxis goes through. I say, <laughs> I have very powerful and influential kindred in Los Angeles mm. that they're not going to declare war in the streets over my praxis. They will declare war in the streets over your praxis, Thomas. And then the Camarilla sees the path of least resistance is maybe let this play out. So yeah, maybe I gotta attend some meetings. Maybe I gotta get a couple of cipher scrolls. But again, if it buys us some time, if it's a day, if it's a week, a year, a decade, you know how slow those people move. That's to our advantage. First, they're not people. <laughs> Second, you have no idea how this works, do you? Victor, you are out of your depth. Spend seem to spend a lot of time out of my depth. Victor, you are <clears throat> moving a little bit faster than I think you are capable of maintaining. And I know that we here, we've been around for a little while. We have certain ways of going about things. And look, I'm all about challenging that. I'm all about change. But you have to do it in a way that makes sense for the greater good. You still have a lot to learn, and you need to listen to us a little bit better. I'm listening. There's not going to be any praxis. The only way that ends is either with you dead, or in, maybe in torpor if you're lucky. It means changing sides. It means leaving the movement and signing up. Now, I know you didn't understand that when you said it. And believe me, I wish I could have seen... Chaz Price's face when you did it because kind of inspired <laughs> but as a practical game plan it doesn't work all right praxis is off the table then what is on the table I mean do we call some people and go over to Beverly Hills tonight and settle it do we talk I want to talk um, what do you all want I would like to try and talk to Vannevar. Well, I'm afraid that this just isn't gonna happen without a fight. Fortunately, we have the greatest minds in Los Angeles, and I think we can be strategic about it. You know, not necessarily go guns a-blazing, cameras on. I'd like the record to show Baron Abrams asked me not to stream until we had this meeting, and I haven't. I like it better this way. Your self-control is <laughs> astounding, unparalleled. Yeah, it's been a long 72 hours. I have quite an empire to run, thank you very much. Mm. You want to fight. 
But you want to fight smart. Correct. Mm -hmm. But you want to fight. Want to is not the right word. Are willing to. Are willing to. I'm willing to do anything for my kindred. And it seems there's going to be a war whether we like it or not. Absolutely. It's coming for us. And it's accelerated. Personally, I think Vannevar can only be so strong because he only has what he took with him when he fled San Francisco. How the hell do you know? If he had it that going for him, he would still be Prince of San Francisco. Hmm. And then we took out his sheriff. I mean, Strauss, the Tremere, I've heard stories. I don't know the guy, so that's, he's serious. I remember Strauss. Chaz, even though he makes my skin crawl, he is strong. But I think the fact that we've already taken one major piece off the board and maybe need to take another major piece off the board might actually force Vannevar to talk, because he hmm. has to. Surgical strike against a high value target? That sounds good to me. Precise and efficient. Nellie tells me she met a La Sombra. There may have been a La Sombra at the Grove, yes. Did you see it? I did not. A lot was happening. Nellie knows that clan when she sees it. I hear things. La Sombra are making some moves. Now, there have always been a handful of that clan in, in the Camarilla kind of rebels against their greater brethren. But I'm hearing there's more of them joining up, leaving their old alliances behind. And if that's true, and at least one of them is on Vannevar's side, that is a significant problem. <laughs> Those bastards know how to fight. What do we do about that? I don't know yet. Nellie's got an in. Chaz, of mm. course. And probably connections from her old days with the Ivory Tower. She's done a lot of espionage work for me in the past, and she's very good at it. I could send her in. It's extraordinarily risky for her. Define send her in undercover with the ivory tower. Yeah. Or if she really is still connected with Chaz, then we use her as bait and he's the target. I like the second one because I, I seem to recall five-ish minutes ago that you all told me how dangerously, recklessly a non-starter pretending to be a part of the Camarilla was, so I can't really say it's too big of a risk for me and then subject Nellie to that, so I can't, <clears throat> I can't get down with that. She has experience. She's done it before. Mm. Victor, it's come to my attention that Nellie holds a special place in your non-beating heart. Would you be available to put her down as an asset? Risk her non-life? Uh, however I feel about Nellie, she's her own person. So if the consensus of this meeting is that's what's being asked of her, whether or not she does it, it's up to her. Mm. I mean, my, my coterie mm. is not shock troops for me to, to move around. All I can do is ask them for things, mm. and they do them or they won't. I would chalk that up to bad leadership, personally. But Again, I don't know if I agree with that. I know that my coterie would do absolutely anything for me. And, and that you would throw them out to the wolves? Well, I have no doubt that they know exactly what to do and exactly where they stand if they double-cross me. Huh. Whereas my coterie knows we cover each other. 
That's very human of you. It's gotten us this far. There's as many points of view in the Unbound as there are kindred, right? Now, when we killed the old prince of Los Angeles in 1944, McNeil, Garcia, me, a few others, the whole point of it was to empower kindred to make their own decisions, to be personally responsible. Uh, as you all know, McNeil split. He left, decided that this failed. This experiment was over, and Kindred can't be trusted to govern their own affairs. I'd like to prove him wrong, but I don't know if I'm prepared to order any of the Kindred in my coterie to do things yet. I'd rather have their willing agreement if possible. Willing agreement? Threats? I mean, what's the... What does it matter? Uh, I'm not as saying they the can't be persuaded. Is, <laughs> the outcome is the same. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Therese, that sounds like a Camarilla talking to me. Exactly. What exactly are you yeah, describing that's different than just being the prince of West Los Angeles? Well, I can explain that to you. Thank you for asking. I told you last time that the Melkavians have suffered an undue, horrible, horrible blight on their reputation. I have shown a path where my kind can succeed, and we do not intend on losing that anytime soon. What blight? Well, I'd say that there's a <laughs> quite a reputation Malkavians to be untrustworthy, crazy, we like to say, although it's 2019 and I don't use that word. Unpredictable, and that's fine. My kindred, my coterie, they trust me, and they know that I would not lead them astray. What does um, your sister think? She wanna fight in the streets? My sister doesn't think. My sister is busy with, uh, her new play toy down in Hollywood. Oh, the nightclub, you heard about that. Oh yes, I heard about it. I gave her permission for the franchise. My sister can't govern, <laughs> she can't even operate a franchise. It's gonna be fantastic. We've got property all picked out, decor on the way. Mm. Do you like spending time with a, an adult woman who has the mental span of a 12 year old? I think you underestimate Jeanette. Mm. In my own sister? I know her so much more than you. Well, I think you know her differently. We'll see. That ought to be interesting. Yeah, and also, for somebody who's constantly advocating for respect for the Malkavians and against your storied, sullied past, maybe you should not publicly drag her every time anyone mentions her name. Jeanette's a legend. People love Jeanette Borman. They People do, in love fact, love her. Jeanette, yeah. because she is fun, and I will not <laughs> doubt that. But Jeanette is destructive to herself and to others. She has leaned into the bad reputation of the Malkavians. She has not taken the path of help, self-actualization. She uses it as a crutch. And that is dangerous, not only for her, but for my kindred. She is your kindred. She's your sister. And she worries me. Fair enough. Hell of a fighter, though. <laughs> she would be a great grunt, should we decide to use her. Well, the time may be. Okay, she's on your team. I'll take her under my wing. Somebody needs to teach her something. Okay. My sister can do what she wishes. <clears throat> I just prefer that she does not have a say in the politics of Los Angeles. Her judgment is Clouded. Actually, yeah, make sure you tell your sister that she's welcome to come to my side of town with all the other vagabonds and cast outs. My sister goes where she wishes. I don't need to tell her that. I'm happy to have her in Hollywood. The club's gonna be a 
huge success. Everybody's welcome to opening night. You all got to Well, it's going to be a job. huge success Good because way. it was already a success in Santa Monica because of the work that I did. And then I set her up with it. And now she is going to take everything that I've set up and use it. Use her party, party, party attitude. Let's fuck everybody. And, you know, uh, actually, off topic. It, sorry, you believe it or not, Therese, I understand what it's like to be the one that does all of the infrastructure and lays the foundation and does the boring stuff and have no one appreciate you for it. So believe me, I understand. But <laughs> back to the matter at hand. Yes. Let's say we pick a high value target. Let's say it works. We take somebody out. We take out Chaz. We take out Strauss. We take out whoever we decide. And then what? That's assuming, which is a gigantic assumption that it works. It works. The then what? The strategy of removing a high value target would be to demonstrate to Vannevar that this conflict is so costly that he cannot afford to fight it, at least not the way he might want to, to make him think twice, to make him understand that it's going to cost him so much to carry on this aggression that he's, as you say, got to talk. Now, one way to do that is to take out the target, let's say with team A. And at the same time, team B is talking. One team's got to succeed. I like this plan, and mm. but nines, you're a legend, man. Like, I, I mean, from the first day I got to Los Angeles, with the, from the first day that I became unbound, I first story about <laughs> Nines Rodriguez, about the uprising, about the revolt, killing the prince, killing a lupine. I saw one of those things. I couldn't scratch it. You killed one of them. Why don't you just walk over there and just blast whoever you want, <laughs> man? It doesn't work like that. Nines, you know that just about every kindred in the city would follow you if you would just say the word. No, 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 no. You know they would. No, Abrams, you think that you know me better than I know myself. And what you think right now is this. You think that who you see right before you, that that's who they would follow. But that's not who I will remain to be. Look, Victor, I'm here listening to you, watching you. And right now, this little gushing spree that you just did. It tells me everything about you that I think still needs work. Because you have this idea of me that's somehow been maintained, that I'm some kind of badass that wants to have droves following me and I want none of that. The fact that you admire it frightens me a little bit. The fact that you keep pushing me towards that frankly disgusts me. Hey, I just bit. want to win. And you know what it says about you? Nines. I respect I you. I do know what so it says much. about me. I know exactly what it says about me. I'm that sorry. I have it says integrity. That you do not know how to lead. And you know what? That's fine. If you don't I want to lead, I never wanted to lead. But guess what? You did these things. You have a following, and we are at war. So if you're too much of a coward to lead mm. your coterie, no. then I don't know why you're here. I'm here because somebody has to step up and I know that I have right. enough know-how to be able to do it to an extent, but I'm not going to lead an army of people who are, <laughs> have this idea of me that I'm something that I'm not. Don't you feel you have some kind of responsibility to step up? Of course I do. Well? Of course I have, no, look, this is the responsibility that I know myself to have. I know that I need to, I know that I need to keep that thing at bay so that it doesn't take over and cause me to become something that is unfamiliar to me. And I don't need followers. I have family that I take care of. I have kindred that mean a great deal to me and I will step up for them in whatever way I need to. But I don't need followers. I don't need to lead an army. I'm no bigger deal than anybody else here. And we're in this, if we're gonna be in this, we're in this together. Can, can I ask a question again as the youngest one of our proud assembly here? 1914? 
1944. 1944. You were there. You were there. McNeil was there. I don't I believe there. you were there. I don't mean to. Before my time. Abrams the only one that was there. What did you all hope to accomplish? We called it the status perfectus. What you know is the anarch free state, right? It's hard to describe to you the degree of tyranny that the old prince inflicted on us. He was arbitrary, capricious, cruel, vindictive. You know, McNeil tried to talk some sense into him, just like you want to do with Vannevar. And uh, Prince had his servants beat McNeil into torpor. Just for talking to him. He didn't want to hear it. And that was the kind of power and authority he wielded. And Jeremy McNeil, when he got back on his feet, he rallied the troops. He made a personal appeal to every kindred in the city. And he asked us what we were willing to sacrifice to be free. Eh, free is a relative term, of course. And hmm, with kindred, the freedom, your mileage is going to vary. But I don't know, there was something about him. He was inspiring. Uh, a lot of us, um, we felt things that we thought were dead inside us. And it was good to feel that fire. I can almost remember it. He got us all worked up and um, he showed us that we were stronger than the Camarilla. So, for a few nights in 44, the streets of LA ran red with elder blood. And we set up baronies, small independent territories, sort of self-governing. But the idea was that we would solve our problems together, kind of like this. Uh, somewhere along the way, though, it became more important to what? Be secure, hold turf. You say I'm moving too fast. You are. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to advance our people. I'm right. trying to advance the kindred. I hear you. Every possible obstacle to the contrary. No, I hear you. And I, Victor, I respect that. I respect that wholeheartedly. But you're moving too fast. Abrams, this is the most I've seen you fired up, at least as close to that in so long. It's been you're, a while. Yeah, because you know, Victor makes a point. You, you're you moving yeah, slow. Would. You're moving slow. He's right. So he's moving too fast and I'm moving too slow. A little bit. He's moving too fast and this is why. I think that you're I don't know, your mindset, it's in the right place. But look, what you just said was that we went one by one to make sure that everyone was on board and had yeah. a reason to be a part of the cause. Yeah, I mean, you'll without, talk to everybody. Without putting anybody in the spotlight because we were doing it together and without trying to shove anyone, any Sounds yourself like into the spotlight. There was actually quite a charismatic leader of this yeah front. let's let's not make any mistake here we were following mcneil if if it wasn't if it wasn't for him igniting that that revolutionary spirit we wouldn't have done it and we now he's were gone to him and now he's gone you don't say nines do you know how to find him allow me to apologize for letting my emotions get the best of me i don't it's mind. something that i've worked on and i want to tell you that I very much understand what it feels like to not like the hand that you are dealt. Not like what you are. But as you said, this is about us working together. This is not about who wants to be a leader, it's about who is the best asset for the right job. Now, as it's been said, you have quite a reputation. 
I say we lean into that. And if you don't want to be the face of this operation, well, maybe Victor should. Hmm. They won't follow him. Why not? The Praxis thing. I know. It's true, you've put yourself in a very strange place, yeah, Victor. Victor. You talk good parliamentary sense. I can see you, you know, I can see you waltzing into their Elysium and talking to Vannevar. And then what? I can't see you up on a soapbox talking to the Bruja downtown about revolutionary fire. I can't see you in the sewers under Hollywood forever talking to the Nosferatu. Get a suit dirty. Exactly. You know, that's really great proclamations about what I can and can't do from people who've stood still for 50 years. What have you done with Santa Monica? What have you done with downtown? What have you done with Hollywood? Why don't Hollywood? you come downtown and come take a look? When's the last time you were there? We need something different. So if you don't like the color of my cheerleader uniform, I'll wear another one. I don't care. If you have somebody else you'd rather prop up on a pedestal, that's cool. I'm not doing this for the click-throughs. I'm doing this to try and save our everything. But you realize that it looks like that you're doing it for the click-throughs. I'm here telling you what my motivation is. And I respect you, I, I respect your history. I respect the fact that you've seen things that you don't want to see again. I understand, man, I do. I understand. And if you are trying to avoid the fight or you don't want to be the face of the fight, that is fine. I'm not avoiding the fight. I'm all about the fight. The fight's going to happen. I know it is. And look, maybe the advantage here is the fact that I am expendable. Maybe it's the fact that if Vannevar eats me, that's fine. And if there's someone else who you think can rally the Nosferatu and can rally the Bruja and can get everybody excited, that's cool. Put them in. I don't care. I've been doing whatever I could do all along to try and make a difference in this city. Well. Nines. Have you met Annabelle yet? <laughs> but you've heard of her. I have. She's the friend I mentioned wanting to meet you. Therese? Mm -hmm. You met her. I have. What'd you think? Unfocused rage, but possibly a good asset. Huh. Can you imagine her persuading Kindred <laughs> to fight? I do think that she has charisma, but how old is she, Victor? Three weeks? Mm, six, maybe two months. She doesn't know anything about the goings on, about the politics. She doesn't know. I can't fully believe that before she was turned, she really knew anything. I Neither did McNeil. I was there from the beginning. Oh. And again, this is why I would like her to meet you because she's Bruja and I don't understand what it means to be a Bruja. I'm very much constrained by my experience. I don't know if I understand it either. So if you learn anything about it, let me know. Annabelle has two diametrically opposed things. She's incredibly passionate and she very much believes in that there should be a better way and that is good and that is important and that is something we all need. The problem is she doesn't know what that better way is and she's also a pacifist. I don't know how we can have someone rally an army that's afraid to pull the trigger. So yes, she absolutely can motivate people to come together for something. And maybe you can be the one that can help her realize at some point you've got to pull the trigger because I haven't been able to get that across to her yet. But in terms of someone that people will listen to, yes. When you say pacifist, you mean this literally? I mean this literally. She refuses to take a life. Heard she burned down a building. Mm. It was she burned down an empty building and got killed for it. Mm. I mean, maybe she just hasn't spent enough time with the beast. Again, she's very young. And for what it's worth, I have told her any of her ideas about how we can do things differently. I'm more than willing to implement the valley. I have, and let me be clear, I have every confidence in her as an individual. 
I just don't know that she has quite clarified her vision enough to sell it. Has Annabelle lost any of her here humanity? I don't think that's particularly a weakness. Hmm. Well, when you're leading a war, you have to be ready to kill. And you have to be ready to sacrifice those that you love. Yeah, and honestly, again, since I've said what I didn't want to subject Jasper to and didn't want to subject Nellie to, I don't want to subject Annabelle into, quite frankly, becoming you. Me? I don't want her to be a storied, gloried war hero that can't look at their reflection. I want better than that for her. Pretty harsh. Is it inaccurate? Hmm. I think I understand Nine's reluctance to pick up the crown. Imperial Rome, we all read about it when we were in school long, long ago. Times of trouble, they would, they would appoint a, a dictator, Caesar. And the idea was that when the trouble was over, when Rome was victorious, Caesar would put down the crown again and go back to whatever it was he was before. Mm -hmm. And that worked for centuries until one Caesar refused to put down the crown. And that's what you're worried about, isn't it? You're worried that you won't put it down. You're not afraid to take it up. Mm -mm. You're afraid that you won't put it down. Ah, hell. So we make Annabelle the mouthpiece. You said it yourself, she's good at rallying the troops, but she won't have to do any of the dirty work herself. And we don't have to worry about her running away with power, because as you have so tenderly put it, you have each other's backs. I mean, I have every confidence in her and who she is. And same as I've said with the others, if she chooses to do this, she'll do it well. Hmm. It's just there's as much a chance that the revolution she inspires will come for us just as much as the Camarilla. Because she doesn't believe in any of this. She doesn't believe in barons and princes and committees and oversight. She doesn't believe in primogen and councils. She believes in a free, open society, kind of like the one that is tearing San Diego to pieces right now. So there's got to be some third point on this scale that, yeah, okay, we don't want princes. Cool. We don't want unchecked chaos. Everybody do whatever they want. Also fine because I personally don't believe we can have a self-governing population that are individually governed by the beast. No. So I don't know what that other thing is, but quite frankly, I'm open to it. Cause I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you all from a place of respect, the fact that it's like, oh, you can't even talk to the Camarilla. We can't even uh, say that we can't even joke that maybe we're pursuing praxis or doing this or doing that. Like we're all so calcified. It's 2019, man. It's well, 2019. For the sake of full disclosure, I completely agree. I have oh, great. made it very clear that I have certain qualms with the way we are running things currently. I think that we could do a lot better, be a lot safer, and a lot more productive. But that's not why we're meeting currently. We need to save our asses. Yeah, yeah. Then, when we're alive, as much as you can be, then we figure out how to run things better than we ever have before. So agreeing with you, we get Annabelle, we ask Annabelle mm -hmm. to be our spiritual center, to reignite the flame that you're speaking of. Understanding that someone else is going to have to, and then maybe a different group, maybe you and I, maybe the three of us, maybe someone else, pursue a diplomatic solution. Is that what we're putting on the table right now? I'm asking, I'm not telling. Seems to be the general gist of it. Understand a couple of things. In here, 2019. In Elysium, 1519. They do it that way because it's worked for them since the Convention of Thorns. 
I don't like them at all, and I don't want them in Los Angeles. But I can't deny that they are effective. And since the Inquisition started breathing down our necks, they're worse. They're weird, neo-feudal, jackbooted thugs mean serious business. The sheriff that Jasper killed, minor league. Hmm. Worse will come. <sighs> Familiar about that. Um, and they're not going to be constrained by any sympathy. Understand that the gist that we just mentioned, if they decide to meet it with fight, with violence, some of us are going to die. Maybe some of us. Maybe all of us. Maybe. Maybe. So what? We put your young protege to canvas in the streets among her kindred. In you know, inject some sort of fire, <clears throat> and then what? Are we still taking out an important figure? Are we still leading a war? We have no, absolutely no clear path ahead of us. The strategy, yeah, I think is okay. The tactics, Nines, you're a field tactician more than I'll ever be. We're gonna need your thinking here. All right. If we take out the high value target, it's got to be at a time where, let's say the. the the diplomacy team can also be effective, ideally simultaneously. Mm -hmm. It would be fantastic if while the diplomatic envoys are talking, the target is going down. I agree. Because that's a way to drop a mic. So if we do that, two teams, but the reason I think we need Annabelle or somebody like her is they, they have to believe. They have to believe like we did right. in 44. They had to believe that it was worth the potential of the final death to overthrow oppression. And the reason I mentioned Annabelle is frankly She's as, left some sort of mark on you, it seems. As naive as she is, as irritating as she is, as millennial as she is, <laughs> she made me feel an echo of what I felt back then, the first time. There's there's something about her. And, and, and honestly, perhaps her disillusionment with this has been my failure in expressing to her what it means to be an anarch. Maybe it's just a matter of you articulating what it is we are and why it is that it matters. Why it is that we are the superior option. Because I think to her, she sees a lot of the same just old stodgy restrictions. Well, you know what? Maybe she's not so wrong. Maybe. Maybe. I know. I'm the only one here that hasn't met her. I think you probably should sooner rather than later. Someone else you got to meet, too. I don't think you've met uh, this kindred either. Let me introduce you to somebody. Oh, now? Yeah, right now. Somebody I've invited. Hmm. Fiona. That'd be Baron Fiona. Pleasure to meet you all. Hello. Well, hello. Congratulations. Thanks. This outlines my property. Part that's filled in. Mm -hmm. I don't see your name on here. That's because I'll be taking over a portion of what you're currently uh, bearing over is now becoming mine. Oh, we're doing this. Cool, cool, cool. So let's just be quite clear on this. We just spent the last hour or so discussing mm -hmm. what we were going to do about Vanivar, what our strategy is for the city, and now I've got to engage in some bullshit dick measuring contest with you. No, I'm that sorry. contest Great. is over. I have no interest in measuring dicks. I don't have a need for it, unlike some of us in this room. It's done, Dick. Done deal, Victor. According to whom? Does anybody care to dispute me on it? Me? Anybody? I care to dispute you on it. Anybody else? 
I love your jewelry. Thank you. That's what I thought. Well, word is, this plan that we're discussing requires Jasper, Annabelle, and Nellie, all as key parts of it, which are also my coterie, requires me as key parts of it. So mm -hmm. forgive me if I have to say, um, in the common parlance, fuck that. How dare you think I'm going to carve up my domain because you decided and then also go to war and perhaps let the four of us lay dead in the streets? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't remember giving you a choice. I don't remember asking your permission, Baron. That's how this works. No, I don't think it does. Mm. Next time you decide to go on live stream and kill sheriffs, remember tonight. <laughs> if you don't want to lose the rest of what I gave you, have you even watched the stream on which I killed the sheriff? Repeatedly, you know? I actually tried to have it removed from the internet. You know you can't do that? No, <laughs> you can't. And you know what's on that stream? What's on that stream is us distracting the law enforcement people that the Camarilla had sent against us, which, by the way, stopped them from executing us all right then. And it shows nothing of the sheriff, nothing of the fight, nothing of anything. And again, we already eliminated a high value target. The thing you guys are talking about doing, we've already done. So again, I say you're welcome for that. You can dress it up in any kind of pompous verbal garbage that you want. The fact is, unnecessary risk and it doesn't happen again. Think of it as a slap on the wrist. Victor, you got lucky. That's not to demean what you were able to accomplish. I like what you did. But we need to be smarter than that from now on. You need to branch out and as much as you can try to find more of us that you can trust and check in with because you can't go out there alone like that lightning is not going to strike twice you know, now they're looking out for you now they know think of it as a buffer zone mm. i am buffering you from the camarilla you so know, when something like that happens again, they're not targeting you. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking two of the very few kindred that I did actually trust and did actually respect just came in and took half of my domain or trying to. Mm. So yeah, mm -hmm. sure, I need to know who I can rely on. Right now, that's exactly four kindred because that list just got a whole lot shorter. So if you're looking for me to say thank you for any of that, mm -hmm. absolutely not. Victor, you you're looking like at it? this the wrong way. Mm. Listen, you are new. You admitted that you have a lot to learn. This is not about the quantity of property that you lord over. We just finished a conversation about how we all work together. Now, if you really were behind that cause, you would welcome our new Baron. Because the more of us that are in charge, the better. That's interesting because I seem to think there's more than four Barons in Los Angeles. Where are the others? What? Where's Long Beach? The Sofa Barons? Hmm. Not Los Angeles proper. I mean, to be fair, we could talk to him. Look, I said what I said before about needing to do what we need to do to assuage this Camarilla threat to face the Inquisition. But fuck all of you in your high and mighty proclamations that I should be thanking you for this or accepting this. And this is not the end. But yes, we can focus on the task at hand. What's important right now, the imminent doom that is coming on all of us and is not going to look at a property map first. Mm -hmm. But believe me, <laughs> this is not the end of this at all. I'd just like to point out, Victor, not only did you very recklessly incite public violence, you also declared praxis, which automatically puts you on the side of the Camarilla. So, you're on thin ice, friend. I'm on thin ice. Let's talk about thin ice. Let's talk about your business expansion. Let's talk about how the Camarilla even knew to be at the Grove because they had information that only you possessed, Baron. How do you know that? because I know it. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. Well, we're way past feeling good or feeling better, Baron. You don't have to like it. So let's talk about that, Therese. Let's talk about that. Why was the Camarilla there? Why were they at the Grove that night? Wait a minute. Think about what 
you are saying. Think about where you are and who you are sitting with. Think about the fact that we took two small neighborhoods out of your giant slice and gave them to someone who deserves a shot. You think about all that before you continue that question because if you get the answer that you think you're gonna get, how do you think this meeting ends? In a spirit of cooperation, we can table that topic and focus on the task at hand. I'd like to use Auspex. What would you like to do? I would like to um, check in with Victor. That's rather a lot of dice. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me that. <laughs> Okay. Victor, as a storyteller, I'm going to ask you some questions. Yes, sir. Please answer truthfully. Yes, sir. Only Therese knows the answers. Yes, sir. What is your current mood? Uh, I'm being very, I'm very angry. <laughs> <laughs> How much hunger do you have right now? I guess we didn't make a check, so. Yeah, make one round check. Uh, one. So, pretty full. Are you currently under the influence of any blood sorcery? I mean, to the best of my knowledge, unless the storyteller says otherwise, I am not. <laughs> there you have it. Thank you. Okay. Baron Fiona. Yes, Baron Abrams. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. What we've decided basically is, uh, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, to deal with the problem at hand. Mm. A plan that involves essentially a two-pronged assault, one violent, one diplomatic, mm. ideally simultaneously, but I don't know. We're going to ask the tactician here. Mm. One team takes out a high-value target, kindred important to Vannevar, with extreme prejudice. And the other team is a diplomatic envoy. They'll be uh, tasked with um, achieving certain political goals with the Camarill. And the goal overall, the overall strategy, is to make it extraordinarily expensive for Vannevar to press this fight. What do you think? I think there's a lot of details left out of that description. I'm strategy tactics here, you guys. Have you decided who's leading um, the political side and which target we're going after on the other side? We have some ideas. I say Chaz. Nobody likes that guy. True enough. I'm fine with that. That'd make Nelly very happy. That might have influenced my decision. I like it when Nelly's happy too. So, Chaz Price, Herald of the Prince, the mouthpiece. Any objections? It's not an easy target. No, he's smarter than he looks. That's what makes it a good target. I say I. As do I. As do I. I suggested it. Of course I agree. It's just protocol. You know. Are we parliamentary now? When it suits us. I. They like it. The eyes carry. Chaz Price goes down. Couldn't happen to a nicer kindred. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, again, I can't speak for Nelly, but I do think when the time comes that he meets the final death, I'm sure she would like to be present, if not the one that plunges the knife. That'd be tough, because as, as good as she is at that, she's, she's great on the social scene. I was thinking about you and her spearheading the diplomatic task force. 
but I'm open to other suggestions. I'm fine with either. We can always ask her, but you're quite right. She's good at her room, but she's good at the espionage. Maybe we let her decide. Because Maybe. there's a version of events also that when the time comes to plunge the dagger, Maybe at that very last second, maybe she hesitates. She's good at the espionage, but is she good at fooling him? I don't know. I don't either. There's a lot of, hmm, pardon the expression, bad blood there. <laughs> He's got something. Not. It's not a secret. It's a... I don't know if you all remember what this was like, but when you've got that one person, that one incomplete, incomplete relationship, that they just do something to you. He's got that on her. Has he got something real on her? Uh, I think if he had something real on her, he'd have used it already. Hmm. And realistically, what's he gonna do? Make the Camarilla hate an anarch? Ooh. Depends on what he's got, I guess. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. Uh, although, I will say, for all the sleaze, he is powerful. Hmm. It won't be easy to do. He's not one to be underestimated. He is not. I'd give anything to see his face when it happens. He's so you, smug. Would you like to be there when it happens, Baron? Why don't you just stream it, Victor? <laughs> At this rate, I might. Wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> The other half, as you say, details, mm. diplomacy, or at least veiled threats. What's that gonna be like? You know, there is a version of these events that maybe we go to Elysium, we are talking, maybe we get Vannevar to the table and the phone rings, the Chaz is dead. What's to stop him right then from just executing Nellie and I in retribution? See, I told you, you don't understand how this works. That's mm. why we do it in Elysium. Uh, but we gotta leave Elysium at some point. We're not gonna move in there. The tradition is safe coming and going. Mm. So be it. If you die, you die for the cause. Well, there is that too. Mm. If the Camarilla can be trusted to do one thing, it is to fall on tradition. They'll right. even enjoy it. Again, nobody likes that guy. Now, I suspect they know where you hang your hat. It's not exactly a secret. I believe that was the point of the earlier discussion. <clears throat> it's not exactly a secret where any of you live. Mm, we can all be found in certain places where we're known to frequent, but I doubt they know where we sleep. There is the not insignificant point of Strauss. I don't know Tremere very well, but from what I understand, finding people, kind of one of their core competencies. So I wouldn't necessarily count on just them not knowing how to find us as being our primary defense. Hmm. Good point. But we have a Tremere too, which means we also might be able to find them and where they're hiding. Who are you thinking of? Eva. She has a vested interest in not having the Camarilla retake Los Angeles. Think again. We would have to ask, of course, but I believe she could be persuaded to help us, if only with he'll be here at this time, or he at least is here at this time. Things of that nature. Perhaps maybe even some minor wards. Perhaps. It may incur, incur debt, of course but I do believe it is within her power. What about these other witches? Uh, the ones that came in from San Diego? There are other Tremere in my domain. Perhaps they could be called upon. I don't know, Fiona, what do you think? <laughs> Blood sorcery. Pretty big asset. Yeah. You know, as much as your behavior has been an issue, it can also be an asset. Because it's something the Camarilla has noticed as well. I th 
think they might underestimate you if you can get yourself in line, but perhaps present yourself as still being a bit out of line, we might be able to create the element of surprise in a way, have Victor distract them, put I, them off. I can say with some authority that underestimating me is a common character flaw. But yes, we cannot outmuscle the Camarilla, but we can outmaneuver the Camarilla. How would that work exactly? Are you saying he creates a, a what? A distraction, a nuisance, a public disturbance? Or are you saying? I'm saying if it appears as though we are unhappy with Victor's actions, uh. they may see him as uh, an asset or an ally. The enemy of my enemy is sometimes my friend. Sometimes not. But yes, Vannevar reached out to me once before. That was before the Grove. But he did attempt to get me to the table already. Maybe I become vocal about how incredibly pissed off I am about you all thinking you can make decisions about me and my life. Maybe I let that fall into the right ears, and maybe that's the reason why they want to discuss things with me. Maybe. That... Sorry, Baron. No, that tracks. That tracks to me. You like it, Knights? I don't know if I like it. There's a lot of maneuvering, and I'm not really the one to go about things in that way, but I understand the necessity for that. You have to be convincing. Victor, if you can pull this off, you don't need to worry about the chunk of land. You will be a hero. I'm not doing it to be a hero, but yes. Um, so let's say we do it. Let's say I sell it. Let's say I convince them that I am, in fact, serious or at least deeply dissatisfied with being the un part of the unbounded. Is the goal uh, intelligence? Is the goal assassination is the goal just having someone on the inside so that when the moment presents itself I will just make use of it we don't know a lot about how Vannevar set up his court so intel has got to be one of the primary goals like you said we don't know how many kindred he has with him I wouldn't count on it just being whoever came out of San Francisco we don't even know really why he left just that there was a threat they couldn't handle. Could be the Inquisition for all we know. So finding out more about who's with him and what they can do, that would be that would be a key piece of intelligence for us. Assassination. I don't know, Nines, you know more about that than I do. That's like an opportunistic thing. I think that it might be too soon to count on something like that. We do need information. Well, and if I'm being honest, uh, even though I've had some success, the dirty work is not my strength. I don't know that I would count on when the moment came that I could overpower most anyone that is going to be a part of that court. I'm better with words. I'm uh, fine with dirty work. Clearly. What about Jasper? <laughs> the sheriff could come with me. He would be within his rights to, if he so chose. Because we, while we may be somewhat ignorant to the parliamentary procedure of the ivory tower, we do know what a blood hunt is. We know what a justicar is. We know what potentially will come upon him if it's found out. You know, I think I'd worry too much about the Justicars. Archons, on the other hand, I would worry about. But yes, I think he's got a perfect alibi if he were to come undercover with me. Although, but again, to be clear, are we mm -hmm. saying this as an aspect of our diplomatic mission? Or are you all asking for something different? I say... We have Annabelle lead the rebellion on the ground floor. Keep the plan. You've already set yourself up quite nicely to go in underground. And we see what we find out. 
and then we take it from there. In going in, does Annabelle know she's leading the rebellion for us? Because she will not lead a cause she does not believe in. I think we have to find out what the cause is. Annabelle's an open flame, and once it's unleashed, it will burn what it burns. Mm. Because if you're asking, is Annabelle going to rally people to fight for this? The answer is no. This is as close to a democracy as we've seen in a very long time. Mm. At least we're having open communication. I doubt you could convince Annabelle of that. You can't convince me of that, so no, you can't convince her of that. Annabelle has a a distaste for what she is. No. Much less what we are. But... What, what if we let her lead a, a rebellion on her own once she gets some backing behind her, see how she does, if she can actually get people behind her, get kindred behind her, and then act as though she has allowed change. We have seen her rebellion and given her some sort of, I don't know, power or something. Mm. You mean like stage you rebellion against us? Not a full rebellion, but if she feels that she can actually incite change, she will become passionate for this cause. But she can, she can actually incite change. Right, but if we just hand it to her and say we want you to do this cause for us, she won't. But if she feels it was her cause that we fell to, that seems like the exact same Camarilla bullshit that we all left behind. I'm not going to weaponize her idealism just as a shell game for our sake, no. We're weaponizing everything, frankly. And whether or not this cause is something that is something we set her up with, or if you feel that she's capable enough to really, truly lead the revolution, I think the result is the same. When this is over, would you mind accompanying me? I'd like you to meet her tonight. I would love to meet her tonight. I think that's a really good idea because maybe she really does have some better ideas. Hmm? Maybe, well, look, at the moment, there's not a lot to choose from, right? And I don't mean that in the way you think I mean it. I mean, Camarilla and the Unbound are... <laughs> really different but the choices are stark it's either drive the Camarilla out or at least halt their invasion or go down on our knees and beg for mercy that's those are the Hobson. options that's a Hobson's choice I'll and if one of those and if those are my options then I want to fight if that's not worth it to Annabelle to at least fight for the opportunity to affect change, then I think I've misjudged her considerably and maybe what I felt wasn't real. Mm. I think that's a fair assessment. And even through diplomacy, I don't necessarily see a version of events where Vannevar Thomas says, hey, you know what? The Camarilla doesn't need Los Angeles. We're just gonna ski right. down. But again, maybe we can halt their advance, maybe we find a way to keep them contained and satisfied hmm. and business continues as usual. Camarilla is never satisfied. None of us so, are ever satisfied. Will you be taking out Chaz then? Oh, no, that's Team B from what I understand. That's the- How is that me, Team B? Yeah. Oh. If I'm gonna put my head in the lion's mouth, I am also not going to be the rifleman. <laughs> it's fair enough. We'll sort those details out. I think we have a sense of where we're heading towards. This means Nelly's gotta get us Chaz intel. We need to know where and when. And then we need to talk to, to Annabelle. I think you actually should probably meet the whole crew, the whole Valley crew. <laughs> that would be Annabelle, Jasper, the Nosferatu who took out the, the, sheriff. the sheriff, and Nelly. Yeah. I'd like to know what you think. I guess I've been uh, consumed a little bit with what's going on in downtown and in my territory. It's time for me to step out and see some of what else is out there and what's crawled into town. 
You're always welcome in the valley. You're all welcome in the valley. <laughs> One more question. What about Miranda? We have an agreement. She provided me with some assistance and some useful intel in exchange for essentially a seat at the table and this, you know. She wants to be a baron? She wants her people to be safe in the valley. And she had a problem, which I'm now helping her with. So as of now, our relationship is profitable. Do I think we can trust the all new, all different ministry? No. I hear they rebranded. Yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> um, and the, the, her club was quite nice before the Inquisition burned it to the ground. And I think the next one is going to be even better. But I think if called upon, she'll probably do what we ask. Good. The ministry, or whatever they want to call themselves these nights, they have uh, considerable resources in a lot of different directions. Some of them are excellent combatants in the field. Mm. Some of them are almost as good at the social scene as Toreador. Although I heard somebody once claim that uh, they were sexier. That is a rumor that is very widespread. I heard that. I hear these things. Yeah, that's, These are things I hear. That is often stated amongst people that have met both members of the ministry and Toreador. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a, con a consistent theme, yes. Yeah. Uh, I will reach out to Miranda. Um, I would rather not reveal the details of the plan unless it comes about that specifically you think they can provide like a concrete mm. assistance with something because I think the less people that know what we're planning, the better. Especially them. But the La Sombra, I don't know that we tied off on that. I don't think we did either. Mm. So, Fiona, I don't know if you know what this is. So, if I'm being pedantic, forgive me. The La Sombra clan are one of the 13 great clans. And uh, the majority of them, as I understand it, at the Convention of Thorns opted not to join the Camarilla. They chose to join the opposing faction, the Sabbat. I always heard that they were the heart and soul of it. They have some unique uh, abilities. I don't know how else to put it except to say that they command shadows. And that's heard. a lot scarier than it sounds. Fierce fighters. They tend, though, to uh, like the shadows to be behind the scenes. They, uh, they... I hear they're decent leaders. I hear they're as good as the Ventru. They have a certain presence, especially in their religious authority. These are things I hear. That's, that is an ugly and unsubstantiated rumor. Although there is one interesting thing about this. The, the La Sombra that Nelly saw didn't kill her. Yeah, I know. Didn't even try. Yeah. What the hell is that? Maybe they're not is joined up with the ivory tower as it seems. Maybe they're free agents. This is, uh, this is just stuff I've heard about their what? Um, changing sides, but could it be an independent? Maybe. I mean, it's probably worth looking into. I think it is. Until then, it's all conjecture. But there is at least one La Sombra in Los Angeles. That's something we can say w with some certainty. <laughs> Terrific. I don't even know how to find it. True. So, I know the night is passing and we all have very busy and important domains to run. So, to be very clear, I will continue trying opening direct negotiations with Vannevar Thomas, get in, find the strength of his court. I believe I have ways to do that relatively straightforward. We will ask... Nelly, to provide us with information about Chaz so we can start forming a plan of how to take his piece off the board. Mm -hmm. You may have to, um, I guess, pretend it's your winter of discontent, right? I'm a very good actor. 
sounds like a plan. <sighs> Miss Fiona, I would just like to say that I'm absolutely enthralled that there is another woman working with us. I can tell that you are goal-oriented, just like me. That's for sure. I look forward very much to continuing to work with you and with the rest of the Barons. If you would like to join me, uh, I have a driver. I don't know how you got here. You're welcome to ride with me back to the club. I'll introduce you to the Coterie. <sighs> At the club? One of them. All right. It's a thing. He owns... Well, I mean, they're awesome. That means so... That, did I use that word right? You awesome. did. Did yeah. I get it right? Yeah, yeah I think so. And, and my holdings are nowhere near as significant as Baron Teresa's in terms of the nightlife scene, but... As long as it's somewhere private, I'm not in the party mood. It's very private. Very safe. Yeah. Victor, before you go... Mm. I know you have, have uh, taken this very personally, and I think that is probably a mistake. I want you to look at this as not you being attacked, but just a switch in tactics. I, I get the feeling sometimes you still look at things in a very human timeline, and you need to move beyond that. You have a long time on this earth if you are smart. You know what I think, since we're, you know, speaking openly now, is I know exactly how Vannevar feels. Vannevar probably looks at me and thinks, who's this guy? What's he think that he can come and talk to me or take a bite out of my stuff and, and nothing's going to happen as retaliation? I get that you looked at me and saw a position of vulnerability and you saw a moment to grab your piece. I can't fault you for that. I did the same thing. But to think that there is ever any version of this in which I thank you, in which I thank any of you for that, that day is not coming. I'm not asking for your thanks. I don't need your thanks. I need your cooperation. We are on the same team. And again, I just said not to look at this as me attacking you. We are working towards the same goal. And if we do not communicate and work together, we will fall apart. I agree with Fiona. I'll do my part. Great. I believe you. So, thank you all for coming. This has been a very productive evening. Mm -hmm. We'll all stay in closer touch, get the details and the tactics down, but we have the plan. You're gonna go talk to the Coterie of the Valley? Let us know what you think. So this seems like a very appropriate place Pause our story for a short break, and we'll see you again very soon. Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night, Season 2, Episode 6, The Warning. We shift our scene now to a familiar location, Club Maharaja, in a run-down neighborhood within Hollywood. This nightclub has been dark for several nights because it has been a temporary haven for our coterie as they lay low following the events of the Grove. And they have guests, the Tremere, the Weird Sisters, the trio of blood sorceresses rescued from the Grove, refugees from the turmoil in San Diego. The night is cool cooler than is seasonable for Los Angeles, and there is a chill in the air. The people of the city are bundled up. They wear their warmest jackets and sweaters. Some of them even have scarves, maybe even gloves, <laughs> Southern California. Kindred don't need these things. You don't feel this kind of cold, just like you don't feel the warmth of the sun because you're dead. You have to fake it. You have to dress seasonably so they don't suspect. But that's the masquerade. <sighs> um, Rodriguez, if you would, could you give me just a moment to go and let the Coterie know that you're coming? I don't think they were expecting any guests. All right. Club Maharaja is um, 
a very large nightclub in the eastern part of Hollywood. Nines hasn't been here before. Don't know if he's heard of it. Not sure how much of a club goer he is these days and nights. But it's a nice place. The main floor is a huge open dance area with a couple of fully tricked out DJ stations. Appears to be a balcony running around the second floor where there are booths for patrons to watch. There's clearly above, floors above that as well, maybe private offices, who knows. There are mortals here. Victor apparently has a security staff. They're attired in dark suits, neckties, and very polished shoes. They're polite to you, but they are definitely alive, not vampires. So we're going to start with nines what, waiting in the office or Perhaps yes. just outside. I, I would show him to my, my personal office before I go and then find the three of them. Okay, duly noted. I've made a note. So, don't freak out. <clears throat> That's a great way to start a note. Yeah. Oh my God, what did you do? Um, a lot has happened. All jokes aside, a lot has happened. And Nines Rodriguez is here. What? Yes, he's here. He's in my office. Is he here to kill us? No, uh, we'd already be dead if he was here to kill us. Valid. But he wants to meet the three of you. He's the one I told you about. He's basically the top bruja in the city. I'm telling you this now, because if I say it in front of him, he'll deny it. But he's the real thing. Um, a lot's going to be asked of all three of you. Like what? Mm, that's that part of it we can we can talk with him, but I do want you to know something before I w we go in here I didn't volunteer any of you for anything Whatever you're being asked if you want to say no say no That was a very sus suspicious way to phrase that hmm mm, eh, Not everybody cared what you thought, but I made them care what you think well, Thank you <sighs> All right, let's go <clears throat> <clears throat> Um, Baron Nines Rodriguez. Nellie G. Pleasure. Jasper. Hello. Annabelle. Hey. You are Baron of Downtown. I want to make sure I clearly give your domain correctly. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Downtown East LA. Downtown East downtown, LA. Downtown, the Fabric District is amazing. You've done such a great job with keeping that area <laughs> up. Thank you. So, uh, I haven't told them anything. You haven't told them anything about the meeting, huh? Mm, nope. No. We gathered it went. How would you describe it, Hector? It could have been worse. Um, there's some housekeeping things that we'll need to talk about otherwise, but uh, long story short, I slash you and I will pursue a diplomatic mission with the Camarilla, and there is also going to be a direct mission against the Camarilla. Mm. How direct are we speaking, Victor? As direct as it gets, Chaz. We're set to maybe take out a high profile target, and Chaz is the one that's at the top of the list. You're gonna kill Chaz. That's what they've talked about in the meeting. Who's going to kill Chaz? The details are to be determined. We're still sorting out all of that stuff, but the purpose right now was of this meeting was that I I, I wanted to meet you. Mm. This group of babies. <laughs> yeah. That have done so much. He's heard stories. I'm sure. Word travels fast in this world. It sure does. Now, what kind of uh, shape are these babies in? I am <laughs> destroyed right now. Mm -hmm. I am too aggravated away from torpor right now. So, so not in the best of shape. No, but I would like to take out the other half of Eva's potion. What is the object, object that you produce? It is a small... Well... It's actually a tiny Ziploc bag <laughs> <laughs> with a glass skull-shaped container inside of it 
and some bluish liquid mm -hmm. that I then, as I'm talking to you, scoop out of the bag and just kind of start putting on all the abrasions and the bruises that are all over my face. And the liquid is, is viscous and thick, mm -hmm. but it smells wonderful. It smells like gardenia and maybe lavender. It's very floral, very yeah. soothing scent. Excuse me while I apply my medication. It's been a rough couple of days. Do I have anything on my person of this sort that can help make them a little better? Ordinarily, perhaps, if you were going into combat, but you didn't come prepared to fight. I didn't. So, no. Now, this is whatever it is, is not something that you're familiar with. This is not standard issue, kindred material, whatever it is. Hmm. But it does its work well. The flesh seals itself, knits back together, restores, becomes, well, perhaps not clean in Jasper's case, but definitely fixed. So, take off two more egg. That should put you out of danger. Mm -hmm. Looking good, my friend. Uh, Annabelle, you also have some injuries. I'd like to kind of maybe heal that sprained ankle. Mm hmm Okay. So, uh, make a rouse check. Your hunger does not increase. How many superficial do you have inflicted? Four. Four, okay. How much do you want to tempt the beast to heal? How far are you willing to go? Maybe half of that. Roll another rouse check. Take off half as you will the vampiric vitae to knit the broken bones together. It's been a rough week. It's like someone dropped a house on us. Yeah, if you spent any, if you spent any superficial willpower, go ahead and mark it off, erase it. So, am I to gather that we've been thrown into the fire? There was a certain perception, dare I say an accurate perception, that what we did at the Grove was wrong. That somehow... We... Interesting choice of words. I said from the beginning, I wasn't gonna leave you out to dry for that. <laughs> Whatever the repercussions of the events that transpired at the Grove are in fact repercussions for all of us. Mm -hmm. hmm. There was a belief that somehow our actions accelerated the timetable that somehow our actions made things worse. I definitely made the counterpoint that we're not the one that's, that sent a hit squad to the Grove. That's neither here nor there. But now, the counterpoint is, I'm supposed to make it known publicly my disservice or my disagreement, sorry, my irritation with some aspects of the Anarch movement and my fellow barons and choices that have been made of late in the hopes that the Camarilla might actually try and pull me in closer. I'm going to back off some of the Praxis talk, but maybe I can get inside and learn some things. You're going undercover in the Camarilla. Maybe. Which leads to one of two possibilities. You have your own history with the Camarilla and your own knowledge of their politics. Mm -hmm. You have been appointed sheriff. <laughs> so right, that thing. Either of you, uh, I don't think both, but either of you would be in a position where if you chose, you could come with me on this mission. The other alternative, again, as we spoke, is a direct assault on Chaz, which, again, either or both of you are uniquely qualified for. The idea is that there's gonna be a two-pronged attack one diplomatic, and one a combat. Taking out Chaz, in this case. Either one is incredibly dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> it is. So, Sheriff Killer, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, who nines. I just want to make it very clear with you guys, and with you especially. I'm with you 
and I was with you at that meeting a lot more than you may have thought. How did that meeting go to you? Fucked up. Right. I agree, to an extent. But it lets you see the points of view that you're up against. They will always show you exactly what they're thinking, exactly what their principles and what their values are. They're all laying those cards out on the table. Even if they're trying to be sneaky, just watch it. I want to learn more about you. How did this even happen? This, this. The coterie, you mean? Yeah. <sighs> well, it used to be the three of us. Mm -hmm. And we worked together because it made sense and we used to be in charge of a tiny little territory called Griffith College. And that was all well and good. And then she appeared through no fault of her own. And we were tasked with teaching her how to be one of us. And then everything got bigger. And then through extreme fault of his own, he acquired the valley. You're welcome. <laughs> and then we had a territory that encompassed the size of everyone else's territories put together, handed to four kindred. Mm -hmm. And so that's how things have gone the way they have. It sounds like you feel you're in over your head a little bit. Oh yeah. Nah. I want to make something very clear. I didn't kill the sheriff because I didn't know what I was doing. I killed the sheriff because <laughs> at that exact moment, she was in danger. That is why I did it. I didn't think about what was happening afterwards. I didn't think about what happened before. In that exact moment, while I was still on fire, I killed the sheriff because he threw her across a parking garage into a car that crumpled up on her impact. I'm with you. I just want to make that very clear. Here's the problem with that, though. And this is why I didn't sell the heroic Nosferatu version of events is that yes, of course you killed him to save her. Of course any of us would have killed him to save her and I would like to think any of us would have killed him to save any of us. But the moment I said that Annabelle's your weak point, I didn't that's now another bullseye on her, which I felt we were probably good on. No, so. I didn't expect you to tell them that. I just wanted to make it very clear in present company who wants to get to know us and who is going to be at least one of the leaders of this whatever it is. And not as weak point. We have each other's backs. What did you sell us on? Different things were asked of all three of you. Again, you are supposed to help eliminate Chaz, directly or indirectly. You are either supposed to help eliminate Chaz or help me infiltrate the Camarilla Mm -hmm. You are supposed to rally all the kindred of Los Angeles in a great and glorious revolution. To which <laughs> I said, you're all individuals and you will make your own choices. All we can do, all I would do, was put in front of you what was asked. And I'll tell you right now, that's the reason why I'm here. That right there. Nope. Because you just asked what he sold you on. Mm-hmm. But what really matters was, and I was there witness to it, is less that than the fact that he didn't sell you out. And he went to bat for every one of you, made sure that you had your own agency in this, and you do. You do. So the question really is, and you need to lay this out and talk to them. What drove you to do what you've done so far and where do you, where are you going from here? And what do you want? And thank you for sharing what drove you to protect her, what drove you to kill the sheriff, which honestly, I'm a little bit of a fan of. Thanks. Sends the right message, I think. 
Well, it didn't really work out necessarily well. <laughs> oh. I guess that remains to be seen. Yeah, all it's a TBD. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's it. That's where we are. Oh, and you know, I might as well tell you now. They carved out Studio City, Universal City, Toluca Lake, gave it to Fiona, made her barren of those lands, which I take extreme exception with I'm and sure will you do. deal with later. But you it is not really necessarily using them at the time anyway. It's not the most important thing at this exact moment, but it did happen. So that's the most I, expensive area in the valley. I have no opinion of Fiona. Never met her. She's a very capable Ventru. Clearly. She took land underneath your nose. Mm, I don't uh. think it's that. I think that uh, Victor here, uh, regardless of his good intentions and the things he's done that are good, made people mad, and they gave away his territory to slap him on the wrist, as it were. Yes, there is a little bit of that, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds How much right. of that? <laughs> well, I guess it depends on which Baron you're talking to. I don't know if I would have necessarily done that if I had everything according to how I would do it, because I don't really care so much about land. I care about those that are on that. The land doesn't matter. You can carve out territories and then re-carve them and draw boundaries again and again and again and again. They get redrawn. What matters is who's on that. Let Fiona have that. Who cares? Do you really care that much about that chunk of land? No. And again, I, I fully recommend it's not the most important thing, but it's the precedent. It's the precedent that they thought they could sit at a table and be like, you know what? These are mine now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Excuse no, me? exactly, <laughs> exactly. Those are just well, there. they did, and they could, because we don't have the power to back up owning all of the undisputed valley. Clearly, otherwise, you wouldn't have let them take it. Hmm. I don't know that I've let them take it yet. This all happened about an hour ago, but I'm trying, and I feel like you should appreciate this. I'm trying to be bigger than that. I'm trying not to put my own personal outrage at the center of things at this exact moment. I'm trying to mix success. I think I that's add, wise. I I'm think trying. that you are wise to not let petty land squabbles get in the way of the great and glorious revolution, mm -hmm. which apparently, what the fuck, guys? I don't know, don't look at me. I didn't yeah, want to change it. You're serious. Anyways. You're serious. You Maybe. can reach the Bruja, and you can reach the Nosferatu. People will listen. What am I, chop lover? It's, well, but see, if you go talk to the Nosferatu, it's just gonna look like an empty room. Like, no one would know what you guys were doing, you know? That doesn't a, mean we're not talking to each other. It, That's a fair point. That is a fair point. Yeah. I just always assume there's like two or three of them around, honestly. But I think the idea, Annabelle, here's the truth of it. And I think you've seen this. Every single person we've met has known that there was something special about you. The three of us have told you there's something special about you. You've still got something that almost all of us have lost, and that thing is important. But all I care about is that you be able to be your authentic self and you be who you are in this world and not someone else's instrument. Things need to change. Mm -hmm. The system is broken as it is. And I did mean it when I said that it just needs to be burned to the ground and started over because you have all forgotten I have been a kindred for maybe two months, three months. How could I possibly lead a revolution? And if I did, then what? I, no single kindred can be trusted with power. We all have that thing inside of us. Mm -hmm. That thing that could make us turn on the people that we care about the most. How does a revolution usually start, dear? 
the spark of an idea. Exactly what you just said. Yeah, yes, and as you said, we all lost the thing that you still have. And so if you're trying to reignite that thing, you've got to have it to reignite it. And you've got it. And you're not alone. We We're... cover each other. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, Annabelle, if you do this, I'm in to take out Chaz. Yeah. No. I can't ask you to do this. I don't feel it's something she would regret doing. Just. I mean, sure, it'll feel great. I'm sure it'll feel real great, like better than sex great. Um, like, like wouldn't mm, go that. But, but like. I mean, she might, maybe. Orgasmic fulfillment aside. I mean, mm. you're still really close to this. I need closure. Look, as Victor said, apparently in this plan, you and I are interchangeable. And I don't care which one I do, because neither of them I'm close to. So you pick, I'll take the other. That raises a couple of interesting questions. Jasper. Yeah. Where is the fennel knife at this time. Do you have it with you? Uh, I still, I would have it still in my possession as I left the building with it. Mm -hmm. Now, you took it out of the building. Mm -hmm. Is it on your person? It's been two days since then. Mm -hmm. It's night two, yeah. I would assume that I went home and therefore probably left it there. And the pendant? The pendant I still have on me. Well, we put the pendant on your sister. Yes. What did we do with it after that? I would have taken it off and given it back to you. Okay, then I still have it on my person. You are still wearing it, wearing or it. at least it's in your possession. Yeah, I am wearing it. Last question. Annabelle, have you washed your jacket lately? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I. it's been raining out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we Febreze it. <laughs> Rot cut, maybe. You hadn't washed it in the last six months. Why the last two days? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, since I mean, Eva put the ward on it. Yeah, it's been raining outside. That's probably good enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you actively washed it? I think is a better question. I have my answer, and I have made a note. Okay. <laughs> Finally, Victor, where is the Ralphus gun? On my person. Technically, I have one in the safe and one on my person. Thank you all. So, as I was saying, you pick what you need to do. Because I am equally as unqualified to do both. I just have to ask if Chaz was there. If he had a stake driven through his chest, laying on the ground, staring up with his eyes open, then you know mm. he could hear you. Could you bring yourself to take his head? Fuck yes. I want nothing but to see that man fucking suffer. Then I put it to you, the tactician. Me, the tactician. We have... Well, you're the more direct approach. <laughs> but I think if nothing else, we at least are going to need you to help lure him out. He'll answer your call. Mm -hmm. He might answer my call. I don't know, maybe he'll answer my call. I haven't tried. He might answer your call. So I mean, here's the thing. Enough. There's too much might, there's too much maybe. It's not my call, it's yours. You have to figure out what it is and where your conviction lies. 
Right now, you're too wishy-washy. You have to figure out what you want to do and stick to it and find the reason for it. It's so, it's so refreshing almost to see this group together. You remind me of something that I'm trying desperately to hold on to. And then you're also reminding me of some of the things that I've learned. And you have a lot to learn. You all have a lot to learn. But I'm gonna try not to condescend. Thanks. Appreciate it. So, let me let you in on something that I think has served me, which I don't think is talked about enough, which is what I just brought up, conviction. Why are you here? What do you want? The thing for me that drives back the calling of the beast more than anything is having a sense of purpose. I can't tell you what to do. You have to figure out what makes sense to you. And don't do it because you're serving someone else because they're telling you to do it. You could say no. That's an option. But what I understand and what I believe we need more than anything right now is to push the Camarilla back. Because they stand for something that's completely opposed to what we have set up here. And if we value this right now, this opportunity to have that choice, to discuss it in the way that we're talking about right now, if you value that at all, then we have to push them back. Otherwise, we go back to something else that robs us of that. This is what I offer. These are what we've come to, at least in the meeting that we just came from. But don't do it because he's telling you to do it. Don't do it because someone else is telling you to do it. Do it because you know in what's left here of you that it's what needs to be done and that you'll stand behind it 100%. I don't care who takes out Chaz. I don't care if Chaz is who we take out. But whatever we decide, it has to be your decision. Do you remember a couple nights ago in that hole? Do you remember when I said to you that if that whole place came down on us, then we'd be down in there together? Mm-hmm. There's a very real chance that when I sit down at that table with them, I will never leave that building again. And if I need someone to cover me, I would ask that it be you. I can't let this world have a Chaz in it anymore. I can't stand by and watch what he's done to me, him do to another person, another woman. And as much as I would love to protect you, I've got to protect women. I've got to take care of them. And I've got to take that asshole out of this fucking world. That no one else has to suffer the way I have. I understand. Look, uh, you too. I know we don't get along personally really that well. But, um, you need to do that because otherwise you're going to live underneath it forever. And I may not be that in social situations, but I can do my part and I'm very good at getting in the way of things that are trying to hurt other people. So there's that. Now, I don't care who we kill because I don't particularly have any desire to kill anybody. But I don't like the Camarilla. I want to be left alone. And the Camarilla doesn't leave people alone. I want to continue doing things that I do when 
then I don't have to do these ridiculous group activities. But I'm very happy to get in the way of the Camarilla if it means that I get the things that I like and the freedom to do them. And I guess we know what the three of us are going to do. That only leaves you. I never asked for this. I never asked for any of this. But there's a fire in here. And it's not just about burning down what has been established before. I want a home for everyone. Everyone deserves a home for X and his kind, for women like Nelly, for Nosferatu. <laughs> People shouldn't have to be afraid, kindred or mortal. So I'm gonna do whatever it takes. You just tell me when you need me. And I'll be there. <clears throat> There's still a little bit more that I need to mm, feel out. Okay about you, not about me. Yeah. We'll have some time tonight, hopefully, to check in. I wanna say something before, I know I'm just uh, uh, jumping in when you're about to say something. Uh, I wasn't sure about you until today. To tonight. I like the way you stood up for yourself at that meeting. Don't stop. Don't stop. Challenge the fuck out of them. They're going soft. They're turning into, I don't know, something that's a lot like what we're resisting. A lot. Mm hmm. That doesn't make them the enemy. We're working with them. Yes, and again, you know, we're all here for the cause of the Anarch Free State. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think it's a coincidence that they throw around our youth, they throw around our inexperience, and yet the core of this plan, the core of the salvation of Los Angeles falls mm -hmm. on the four of us. Absolutely. It sounds a lot like what they did a long time ago, doesn't it? Believe it or not, I think the Anarch Free State is a fantastic idea. It'd be really great <laughs> if it ever happened. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, Annabelle, I don't think there's a version of this that ends up with everyone following their inner compass to the greater good, because all of our inner compass is calibrated towards horrors. Hmm. I don't know what the alternative is, but kindred in our native state cannot be trusted to do the right thing. But that doesn't mean we don't try. And it doesn't mean that we've got somebody who's got their boot on everyone's neck because the person that's stepping on someone else can't be counted on to do the right thing. So I don't know what the alternative is. This is the same argument that can be made about humanity. <laughs> I mean, as humans, I remember we fought so hard against political corruption, against money, against these corporations. And sometimes at night we'd lie awake and we'd ask ourselves, like, can we do some any better? 
could any single human or group of humans do any better as the great experiment of democracy failed? But as Jasper said, we have to try. And just because we have superpowers now doesn't make it any less true. And we definitely know what we don't want. Mm. And maybe you don't, maybe you know more than you think you know about what this all is. So maybe approach it like you'd approach the human version. Because you're right, it doesn't sound that different. Just with a lot more teeth. You know, if there is, I am going to, oh, this is so weird. If I am gonna be the mouthpiece of this revolution, I may not always be able to know the finer points of the politics, but you would. And I mean, I might not always have the guts to strike the killing blow. I would never put that on you. But I know if it was the right thing to do. I don't, as I said, I don't want to kill people. But I'm not really killing people now, am I? <laughs> we had that talk before. Victor, <laughs> your phone buzzes. It is not a call, it is a text. It is Ramona. Hmm. Yo, peeps on your roof. Nines, um, Ramona, I think you, you, you might know her from before. Hmm. She's been keeping an eye on this place for her. She says there's people on the roof. Um, I text Campbell, eyes on the roof. The reply is one word, yes. Uh, we might have company. I don't think you were expecting anyone, were you? Oh. Um, all right. Um, I, I reply to Ramona, um, how many? Her reply is, rats suck at counting. <laughs> I assume you're armed. I'm ready. Is that human or vamp? Kindred. Your phone rings. It is Campbell. It's a call and not a text. I'm Campbell, yeah. I, I don't put it on speakerphone, actually. Sir, Campbell here. Yeah. Uh, there are three individuals on the roof. Um, we have people coming in. Hostile? It looks like they're trying to open the skylights. I have people positioned. I think one of them has a camera. Huh. Okay. They're trying to jimmy the skylights, sir. Take them down? Don't hurt them. We need to see who they are first. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, can I use heightened senses to kind of listen in a little bit on hearing what he's saying? Oh, with heightened senses, you can um, increase your hearing to a degree where you can hear what Campbell had for lunch through the phone. <laughs> oh, um, as for a description, it could be. You Jess, know. You, um, I, I, put, I do put Campbell on speaker now, and I say, Jasper, would you mind taking a look? Sure. It might just be paparazzi. <clears throat> I'm gonna use unseen passage. You're going to vanish from view. Yeah. Make the check. I'm good. Your hunger does not increase. You are master of yourself. I'll go take a look. So you excuse yourself? Yeah. You know those th th um, three sisters that you were trying to put your at your um, record label? Mm -hmm. Could be them. Not coming in the roof. I think this might be like a TMZ type thing. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Let, let's just. They let's were just... kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe. Let's just find out. Uh, random question. Remember that hunter weapon? Do you have that still? Uh, yeah. It, it's at home. Okay. It, it does. I was going to see if he knew what it was because he knows a thing or two about mm -hmm. it. Mm. Yeah. We'll look later. Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah. It's the a, hunters. It was a thing. Yeah. Okay. Campbell says, I'll keep you apprised, sir. Um, 
don't hurt them unless they come in heavy. Yes, sir. And then I hang up. Mm-hmm. Jasper, mm-hmm. you know the way, the roof. You know the quick way mm-hmm. from the offices to the rooftop. Right. So you take that route mm-hmm. through the ladder, out the door. What you see when you reach the roof are three individuals silhouetted against the night sky. They're bundled up for the cold. They're wearing cold weather parkas, ski hats, gloves. One of them does have a camera, and not just a SLR camera, a television camera, mm. a steady cam. Right. Connected to a battery pack that he wears strapped to his back. The other two are busy trying to pry up the skylight. Fortunately, it's been secured very effectively, and they're having a difficult time of getting it open. Mm -hmm. Either that or they don't know what they're doing. Right. Campbell's men have not yet moved in, but they are positioned in the shadows nearby, ready to move. Do these people have any sort of insignia or a patch on their coats that would denote that they're part of like a news crew or something, some sort of TMZ-esque thing? Or do they look more like a independent guerrilla film group? Wits and perception. One success. You can't tell from here. They don't appear to be wearing any insignia or uniforms. Right. There's a loud snap as the lock on the skylight gives way, and that is when Campbell's men move in. Mm -hmm. Their guns are drawn, but they're held in the ready position at their sides. They're very efficient. In moments, the trio is surrounded, and you can hear a very large argument beginning, very loud argument. Um, What you gather is that the... um, three individuals trying to break in are, um, as Victor predicted, some kind of paparazzi, private film crew, trying to get a look at uh, Victor Temple Post Grove. Right. And uh, you hear the name Baby B, mm-hmm. Nellie G. You hear the calm voices of one of the security guards trying to encourage these people to leave the roof peacefully before they have to get hurt. Right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and leave this to his security and head back inside. You return about a few moments later. Um, Seems to be some sort of... uh, I feel like I'm being generous when I call them reporters, looking to get a glimpse of uh, baby... Uh, <laughs> it's not funny. Post <laughs> activities at said uh-huh. Grove. Your security seems to have it well in hand. I actually text Campbell. I say, um, keep an eye out. It could be a distraction. He doesn't text back, but he does call. Uh, I put him on speaker again. Sir? I say, You're on speaker, Campbell. Yes, sir. We have them. Hmm? Sir, the man with the camera is... Paul Sutton, he's been in the club before. Do you recall the um, night of the altercation? Mm-hmm, yeah. Same reporter. Uh, tell him I'm not here, but I will give him an exclusive one-on-one interview if they leave peacefully. Otherwise, we have to call the police and they're breaking an in interview. Understood, sir. Um, I turn the phone <laughs> off and I say, um, He's kind of a grunt level reporter. I've dealt with him before, but. Wasn't he the one that you, you know? We don't really talk about that, but I mean, I might have convinced him to give me his notebook. Yes, maybe. But uh, I don't think he's going to remember that. At any rate, um, there's always a chance that there's more to it than that, but so be it. Um, now, Rodriguez, mm-hmm. uh, again, thank you for coming to visit. You're welcome anytime, but I want to make sure we cover everything that you need from us while we're all here before the next wave of insanity hits. What is this? Paparazzi. We're famous. Fallout from the Grove. Uh, 
they're famous, just to be clear. Yeah, we she's are famous, and she's in the process of becoming famous. Oh, great. They mentioned you guys. They, they mentioned L.E.G. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't know this? Who doesn't know Arachnophoria and tits? A patient. I do have Not funny. one question that's, at least to me, much more important than whatever we're talking about. In this plan, do I say yes or no? Mm. The barons were somewhat adamant that to say yes means joining the Camarilla, which makes you an enemy of the Anarchs. I pointed out to them, as I pointed out to you all, that I think Vannevar is counting on us having knee-jerk, irrational reactions like that. Um, the simple answer is stall as long as possible. But if I'm going to be the one that follows you into the Camarilla, I'm gonna have to give an answer. I think our play is we're potentially free agents. Mm. That is only going to get us so far. Believe me, I'm quite clear on that, but it might buy us whatever time we need for whatever's going to happen. We next. need time. So stall. We are eyes and ears, but we're also a distraction. We are going to try and get a sense of fan of our Thomas strength. I don't exactly expect him to put on the here's the everything I've got no. <laughs> right. cabaret, but at least we'll get a sense. If we're in there and he's got 15 uh, Banu Hakim, is that what they're calling themselves now? So yeah, Children, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. So just so I'm clear, go in with the intention of that I am considering his offer and want to learn more. Because I'm going in with the intention that I'm considering his offer and want to know more. Got it. I don't like that. Yeah. It puts a target on your back from both sides. I mean, there's a target there already. Yeah, Let's the opposing of that is he says no and it becomes a blood hunt and that's yeah. far more dangerous than him being under Vannevar's nose. And as it, as it pertains to you guys, whether I die or I go away, the same effect happens for all three of you is that I don't get seen again. So, we'll see what happens. Well, you die, I die, brother. Which doesn't mean we don't both die. Let me be clear on that, but yeah. I'm not gonna <laughs> let you go down alone. Thanks. Hmm. Stall. 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 We need them to... We need them to know that we're working together better than they would have ever thought we were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need them to believe that our numbers are greater than they thought. Which is why we need cooperation amongst the barons. And which is why we need to bring everyone together. Hold on, though. Contrary. They underestimate us. They think that we're not organized. Not exactly. like them. Mm -hmm. But why yeah. tell them that we have big numbers? Let them oh, think no, we have no we, numbers. No, we want to show them that we do. Yeah, just like Chaz As said. We take them out. He said that we were a bunch of lawless, unorganized rabble. But we outnumber them. Greatly. At least the ones present in the city, yes. I think if I'm not misunderstanding, what you meant was that we let them continue thinking what they think yes. until we make our move and then show them yes. what we are. Exactly. By achieving multiple things. At the same time. At the same time. Specifically, specifically, we want the Camarilla to understand that trying to take Los Angeles will take so much time and so much resources and be so expensive in every possible interpretation of the word that it halts their advance. We don't think they're gonna pack up and leave, it's not their way. But at least if they sort of dig in and we dig in and some semblance of peace reigns, that's victory. So we've talked about our plan. When is this happening? There's a lot of intel that needs to be gathered prior to this. I think it starts now. I mm -hmm. can put the word out of my dissatisfaction with recent events 
and I think my phone will probably ring fairly quickly. Yeah. It has to start now. Okay. Do you have any way to find him? Chess? Oh, that's very easy. I think the first step is just kind of keep an eye on his comings and goings. Like, he's going to be a creature of habit. We all are. Mm-hmm. He's not very subtle in any sense of the word, it, so... You know, far be it from me to criticize such a thing, but no, subtlety is not Chaz Price's MO. So, looks like you need to get your don't, leading don't, things. You yeah, you're going on a bruja, a bruja field trip. Get to see what it's like on the other side. No offense or anything. But are all Bruja assholes? Because all the Bruja we've met have kind of been assholes. Uh, it is a consistent theme. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Ooh, I guess. Asshole here, too? I don't know. I guess we have yet to see. I guess we have yet to see. Let's be honest, there's probably a not insignificant number of people that think you're an asshole. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. That's all right, a lot of people think I'm an asshole. No, but you are, though. It's just whether or not it's a clan trait is what we're discussing. Fair. Uh, I think I'm going to go see to these paparazzi. I don't want them to see me, but I'm going to make sure that that situation's resolved quietly. You want to take a personal look? Get close. I'm more Mm. interested in giving them their space. Annabelle, the alarm you set on your phone to check an important detail goes off. But when you check the list, it's empty. I I put on a You want to add something to the playlist? What song do you choose? Tessa Violet's Dream. Hmm. Message of hope. I've made a note. Victor, you can, of course, observe unseen. You know the ways, the ins, the outs of this club better than anyone. The security team does its job very well. The reporters, or whatever they are, seem satisfied. They accept the coffee that they're given, they chat politely with Campbell, and without too many minutes passing, they exit without making a fuss. I pull out my phone and I text Fiorenza. I've been betrayed. It takes a few moments. The message that she replies with is, join the crowd, my boy. Join the crowd. Have a second. Yeah. Yeah. I might not be as done as I thought. Uh, you mean with? Yeah. Oh. Okay. But um. Uh, I guess. Speaking of which, uh, <laughs> um, how, uh, how, I think, I think Ava fences Oh my god, no. <laughs> Yeah. Why are we talking about this now? Um, because, uh, it distracts me from thinking about my things. Uh, I find it intensely adorable. Uh-huh. I think. I don't think about it. I don't know what to do with that. You like her? 
That's okay. You don't have to answer. But I know it's complicated. Yeah. Because you, you have someone too. I do. She's somewhere. I assumed so. As it seems like your person is somewhere. Meaning neither of us know where. Yeah. Which is concerning. I don't like that I don't know because I've known for a long time where she is. What do you mean? You remember like maybe two weeks or more ago I said I made a mistake? Yeah. I was referring to her. What did you do? Jasper, what did you do? She may know that I'm around. Uh, well, did you talk to her? Did... No, nothing. What does she, what does she think? She doesn't think. I don't know. I tried something stupid. I tried to get her to go away for good, and it backfired, I think. You tried to tell her not to think about you anymore by alerting her of your existence? Yes, Annabelle, that wasn't the intention. Okay, okay, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. It's not important to the current set of affairs. Okay, okay. It's something I have to deal with. Yeah, well, if you ever want to talk, let me know. Uh, I think you have bigger things to talk about right now, but I uh, do appreciate it. And... Well, I can take a break from being the leader of the revolution to talk about your girl problems, okay? Ditto. So go have your meeting. <laughs> I'm gonna go find Nines. Mm -hmm. He's right where you left him. <laughs> Do I take it then that you two intend to have a private conversation? Very well. Victor and Nellie. Do you remain in the office? Do you give them the office so that they can talk here? Do you send them out? No, I clear out. I know this room is soundproof, it's secure. Mm -hmm. You know that they can talk privately here. Do you accompany him, Nellie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? Mm, go down to the booths. To the second floor balconies, the <clears throat> booths that overlook the dance floor. Um, and I share with her how I actually feel about tonight's events. Hold that thought a moment. Jasper? Yes? When Victor and Nellie leave the room, where do you go? Where do you go? Well, I have to go. In order, even if I was to stay, I still have to go. Yes. But... I go, but I wait outside. Outside the door? Outside the door. When the door closes behind you, do you remain visible? No, I stand still and I just use Cloak of Shadows and stand by the door. You will be unseen. Mm -hmm. Very well. Welcome back. Thanks. How are you holding up? It's been a hell of a couple of months. <laughs> So, what do you make of all this? This is nuts. I, I feel like just as soon as I find out that there is the other side of death, that it's suddenly in turmoil. There's war and power struggles. Mm. 
I'm asked to lead the people. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty okay at that in life. You were winning. You're gaining ground. What drove you to do that in life? Same thing that drives me here. Which is what? Everyone deserves a home. Everyone deserves to feel safe. Someone once told me that if a building is housing something evil, you burn it to the ground. Hmm. And while I still can't 100% get behind that, because I still feel that everybody is capable of change. Everybody has some spark in them. I do agree that in order to rebuild You have to what? Light the spark. It's gotta start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that leads to what? A burning building? Always? Maybe not always. In order to rebuild, you just have to rebuild. You don't have to know the entire journey to take that first step. You don't know if it's gonna result in burning anything. You don't know what that new building that you build, you don't know what it's gonna look like, you just have to start. Is that vastly different than how you went about it in life? We know where we're heading towards, we know what we want. You don't have to know the entire thing yet. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of a lot of people getting hurt that don't need to. I'm afraid that if we do fail at this, that it'll all be scattered to the winds and we have to live under the boot the Camarilla thugs. We might. But that's the thing, is that I won't. It's either freedom or death. Same here. You said something earlier. <sighs> something about, oh, being the leader of the revolution but you're not not yet you don't get to decide that I get to decide that for myself if that's what you are going to be for me yeah. just as they have decided in their own way whatever it is that's the spark the spark that I that I see already so quickly and it's surprising as I hear it told from one person and another even Therese said something just seeing even how your group how you are with each other and how you are with them it's inspiring it's real. It's something as close to human as I've seen in a long time. I love them. I love them. They're my family. You can tell, and they return it. So, why hesitate when that is the spark? Mm. 
I knew, I knew, I knew when this meeting earlier when it was happening, I knew uh, it might lead to something. I wasn't sure what it was exactly, but I was curious. And I wanted to be open, and at first I thought I was going to be putting Victor in his place. This upstart who seems to me a little mm, self-obsessed, I guess. I mean, I feel like you also did that, probably, yes. It sounds like the meeting was a lot of that. No, it wasn't. Not at all. Not at all. I think he reminded me of my place. Of the place that I believe in. As I feel like your group dead, and as I feel like you are doing. And I thought I've been so alone in this for a long time, and it turns out I'm not. And I believe in what was in the room when you four were together. I believe in the care that you have in each other. I believe in the bond that's there. And I don't know what that means, but I want to fight for that. I want to find a way to make that be how we talk to each other in that Baron's meeting, such bullshit that goes on in that room full of these kindred that have forgotten so much of what's inside of them. This, 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 this. You can feel it. This is you, something. You can feel it that at the end of the day, even though we're young, that this feeling and this fire is gonna be stronger than any political maneuvering yeah. that those people will ever do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, uh, you need to just do this. And you need to just show up to people, to, to kindred and people. You have security here? You have mortals working here. What is this? Victor is a man of people. <laughs> Who's to say that we can't change in a way that we haven't even been able to fathom? Who know? Who? You see right now, I don't know. I don't even know what that is. I thought I had an idea of what the trajectory was and what I was fighting for, but now it's something new and uh, you don't have to be a part of it. You don't have to do a thing that you don't want to do. But I do know that this needs someone to step out that can handle being in the spotlight that won't succumb to what that spotlight can do. Which means that you need to know yourself and you need to know what this means. I'm still learning. I have a lot to learn. I, I could learn from them, I could learn from you. Well, I can learn from you too. Victor, on the balcony, you can see that Campbell has once again secured the doors of the club. People are gone. Peace resumes. I, um, I text him. Did you tell him I'd do the interview? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll schedule something. I'll do it. Um, seen anything? It's gonna be a strange question, but anybody not themselves lately? There's a long pause before the text reply comes back. No, sir. Where are you right now, Campbell? Ground floor, sir. From the balcony, can I see him? Uh, if you lean out, yes. He's near the front doors, having just secured them. I watch how he walks. I watch how all of them walk. So I've seen the puppet mastery way mm. that possessed people walk, mm. and I just look, kind of scan to see if anybody's got that gait. Now that you know what to look for, 
now that you've seen it up close and very personal, uh, you would probably spot it right away. It's distinctive. Mm -hmm. Campbell doesn't show those traits, and neither do any of the other security guards that you see. Well, one way or another, see, we're not going to avoid a head-to-head -head conflict with the ivory tower. Of course not. Didn't you think it was going to be different? Mm, I'd hoped there might be a way to talk it out, but... <laughs> no, dear, no. Kemria don't talk with the Anarchs. I want you to know, though, um, Chaz was my idea, and I wanted it for you. Thank you. So if nothing else good comes from it, you'll be free of that guy. So, what else happened in there? You don't seem very happy about it. Um, you know, we, we, we tell Annabelle about how, you know, we can't be trusted, kindred lie. You know, she keeps appealing to our better angels and we keep telling her how it's not a thing. Mm -hmm. But the reality is we do form our relationships. We care about each other. Jasper and Annabelle, we care about each other. I have people I thought was friends and the fact of the matter is Abrams and Fiona cross me over. They cross me over in a very specific way um, that will be dealt with. Fiona. I, I want you to know, though, I know how you feel about Isaac. And uh, I had quite a bit of esteem for him, too. And I even understand why he did what he did. But in the fullness of time, it cannot go unanswered. But that's not tonight's problem. Clearly. So, I guess the next thing we need to do is figure out um, how to get a hold of Chaz Price. I have a couple of ideas. I'm not quite sure getting a hold of him is really the top of the priority. I want to know what his ins and outs are. What's his routine? Who is he hanging around with? Because once we cut that tie, a whole bunch of other ropes are going to start trying to tie in. I also need to ex you to explain to me Elysium. Like, I know it's like, like, you know, holy ground, like Highlander. Like, I don't even, like, what, what even is that? Because apparently short, Jasper and I have to go there. Easy answer. It's a sanctioned area by the prince himself who deems it a safe haven for all kindred to walk around in, get there safely, leave safely, but no harm, no nothing, no weapons. Weapons are usually taken away. Mm. Um, no fighting. I mean, you can fight with words. Uh, Typically, so what, no powers. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, so now we have a plan, a target, strategy, and tactics. Well, this is where we'll leave our vampire story for the moment. But before we go entirely, it's important to remember that Secrets do have a way of getting out. And that, my darling Miranda, is the gist of it. New prints, new rules. Everyone gets a clean slate and a chance to make good. Even Victor Temple, though of course you won't have the sense to accept. Hmm, a prince in Los Angeles. It has been a long time. Does my dear Venival truly want this? But of course. The ivory tower must take the long view, after all. I see. And the ministry? The impediments to rebuilding your nightclub will be removed immediately, followed by a substantial investment in your new venture. That is very generous. But you see, I've already made an arrangement, a very satisfying arrangement with the Baron of the Valley. <laughs> yes, the undisputed Baron of the Valley. <laughs> Let us suppose, for the sake of argument, that this arrangement of yours was suddenly rendered null and void. Hmm. What then? Hmm. If that were the case, your terms would almost be acceptable. 
Almost. What more would you ask? Isn't it obvious? The Valley. Vanavia knows that the Ministry is more than capable of watching his, um, how do you say, back door? <laughs> I suppose I could offer you this. However, in exchange for something so valuable, I would require something substantial in return. Uh, something that would show Vanavar that you and your associates may be relied upon. When the time is right, and you will know when it is time, do not respond to Victor Temple's request for assistance. Do nothing to help him. Do not rescue Annabelle or Nellie. To get what you want, all you need do is absolutely nothing. 